Thanks very much for downloading this episode of Folk on Foot. Before it starts, I just wanted to share a message with you because we rely entirely on our listeners to keep this show on the road. We don't take any advertising. We don't take any sponsorship. We have a generous bunch of people who give us some money every month to make sure that Folk on Foot can continue. And if you'd like to join them, you can do that at folkonfoot.com slash support us. You can become a patron and make a regular contribution, or if you don't want to do that, you can just buy us a coffee. It's as simple as that. And you can do it at folkonfoot.com slash support us. Every donation, no matter how small, makes a big difference to us. So thank you, and enjoy the walk. at the most amazing view. I'm on top of the world, looking down, and I can see the shadows of the clouds moving over the mountains of Yorkshire. And I'm with the singer Johnny Campbell and the fiddle player Mikey Kenny. And if you want to know how we got here and why, stay tuned. Johnny, good morning. Mikey, good morning. What a great day. It's fantastic, yeah. It Beautiful wasn't... weather. Yeah, yeah. And, and where have you brought us to? Um, well, this is in the middle of Three Peaks country. This is... Oh, oh. train coming. <laughs> that was a train in the background. Uh, this is the middle of Three Peaks country in North Yorkshire. Um, we're in the middle of what is the Three Peaks. Uh, behind me now is Wernside, the highest point in Yorkshire. In front of me is Ingleborough, the second highest point in Yorkshire. And over in the distance is... Uh, Penny Ghent, which just kind of rises from the background there. And, and prominently in the landscape is the Ribblehead Viaduct here. Yeah. Amazing piece of Victorian engineering. Massive span, and that train that you just heard hooting is probably going to go over it. So what's the plan? The plan is to climb the highest point of Yorkshire, which is uh, Wernside, at 736 metres high, I think it is, and record a song at the top of it, uh, a traditional song of Yorkshire. Leeds, a seaport town. Right. And is this part of your album that we're doing now? Are we helping you out with your album? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's an album at the moment entitled True North, which is uh, recording traditional songs of northern England on their respective county high points. Right. How many have you been up so far? Six of the eight. So this will be the seventh. Right. Um, and how's it gone? Because recording on the top of those high points must be quite a challenge. It is, yeah. There's been a couple of quite hard ones. One of the hardest probably was Micklefell, which is the highest point of County Durham. To get on top of that, you have to apply for an MOD permit, and you can only get up there once a month. So I uh, had to apply for that and didn't tell them about the guitar and the recording equipment or anything like that, but that's a 20-odd mile walk. Today won't be anywhere near as strenuous. Thank goodness I'm... for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get going. Yeah. So what made you want to record songs on the top of all these high points? I wanted to try and kind of like marry the landscape with the songs and with the history of Northern England. The concept of the album True North is to get like a, an overview of, of the North itself. So each song will kind of tackle different aspects of the North. For example, today's song called Leeds, a seaport town. It will be more of like the industrial aspect of West Yorkshire is the song. So other songs themselves. Just over the hill there we'll see Dragoreth, which is the highest point of Lancashire now. I recorded a song on top of there called uh, Four Loom Weaver, which by its title is about weaving the yeah. looms. And, and the it, wool industry of Lancashire. Absolutely, yeah. And if it wasn't for the topography, if it wasn't for the landscapes, the 
the, the water would roll down from the Pennines from here down to Manchester, down to the Lancastrian mills, you wouldn't have that, the industry of the mills, you wouldn't have the Industrial Revolution. And if it wasn't for that, those songs wouldn't have been born. The industries wouldn't have been there. And a lot of the, how the North is now, how, how our links with industry, how our links with trade unionism, chartism, it wouldn't be there. So that's where I kind of see like the, what they call the psychogeography is like how the land influences the people. I mean, you're a man after our own heart because that's exactly what Folk on Foot is all about, is seeing the landscape and the music coming together mm. and thinking about why the landscape influences the music. But I mean, we'll just, just say we are coming closer and closer now to the viaduct, which is a, an a, incredibly impressive piece of engineering and it just bestrides this landscape, doesn't it, like a giant... I, I haven't counted the archers since last time I was here, but I'd, I'd probably say that there's about 24, I think. This took a handful of years to build. You can see right in the middle, 1875, that's when the last stone was put there, and it opened in, 19, uh, in 1876. Hundreds of people died creating this. This was the last railway line to be built by manual labour, and you won't be able to really see it now, but there was three shanty towns that existed around here. One of them was called Batty Wife, Sebastopol, and the final one was uh, Belgravia, which was the people who, who were the supervisors of the whole project. And they naturally were looking up somewhere over there in the distance, on the highest point, looking at the workers. So they looked down on the workers? And they looked down on the workers, and a lot of people creating this diet of malnutrition, and just the, the hard labour of there this. There must have been industrial accidents as well here. Because, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Getting this, these vast blocks of stone in place must have been such a huge effort. Yeah, absolutely. But what, what it now stands is, is, is a testament to the, to the will of those people. Um, there's this amazing viaduct. It's called the Ribblehead Viaduct. Uh, originally it's called the Batimos Viaduct. And this place where we're standing now was an absolute quagmire. Now we're standing on like a, a very, very well-paved path. Um, but back then, this was a, a really hard existence for the navvies creating this viaduct. I wonder if this is a place for you to sing as a song, Johnny. I think so, yeah. Now, what have you got over your sleeve? I'd like to do a song uh, called A Right to Rome. This was a song that I released uh, last year, which was a collaborative song between myself and Commoners Choir, who are a 50, 60 piece radical voice choir from Leeds, and also the Skelmanthorpe Brass Band, who are. 30, 40 piece brass band from Skelmanthorpe who. Oh, what a shame they're not here with us. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Won't be the same without them, will it? No, no. We'll do our best. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. In 1649, to St George's Hill they come. The diggers came to show the people's will. Landlords they despise, clergy they defied to reclaim rightly what was ours. Through courage, through might, embodied the people's plight, their homes and crops raised to the roots below. The struggle was not in vain, we'll sing of them again in his quest. For a right to roam, rising plumes of acrid smoke bellowed out those words you'd choke. A plan to liberate the working folk When Rothman heard the call To the moorland for a stroll Free the other from the bondage of a few For just one day a week On a Sunday for a seek Bid adieu to the clag for moorland The struggle was not in vain We'll sing of them again In his quest for a right to roam Over Pike, Fell, Clough and Moor, amongst the bracken I adore, I think of those who have gone before. Wainwright, Wordsworth and McCall, Coleridge, Hill, Clare, many more, though these lines permit to name a few. So I'll roam where I will, over mountain and hill, lie where the sun-kissed rock entices me. The struggle was not in vain, we'll sing of them again in his quest. 
for the right to roam. So I'll roam where I will over mountain and hill, lie where the sun kiss rock entices me. For two days a week, maybe more now, we shall seek in his quest for the right to roam. For now, two days a week, maybe more now, we shall seek in his quest for the right to roam. For now, two days a week, maybe more now, we shall seek in his quest. For the right to roam. That was fantastic, Johnny. And uh, I, I could just, in my imagination, hear the choir and the band joining in in the background. But there's lots of issues in that song that we should pick up in the next bit of the walk. And here comes a train across the viaduct to set us on our way. As, as I imagined it, you know, because I, I had a vision of a, a great steam engine, you know, with plumes of steam coming out. This is a little diesel yeah. uh, carriage going across, mm. but you can imagine what they it would do. have been like in Victorian times, can't yeah, you? Yeah, and they still do run across through the uh, steam trains every so often. It's a fabulous sight, and uh, there are hundreds of train spotters here, as you can imagine, <laughs> at those times. So that song's about the historic protests, I suppose, uh, in, in, in support of a right to roam. What is it about those stories that means something to you? Well, I released the song last year on the 90th anniversary of the Kinder Mass Trespass, and I wrote the song as the intention of, like, a modern rambler's anthem, like the Manchester Rambler, Hugh McCall, and that's been sung 90 years on and 90 years more. It'll be sung for posterity by ramblers. My intention was to write a song to coincide with it as, as well, but also within the folk tradition of using the song to, I suppose, galvanise people to come along to the, the 90th anniversary of the Kinder Mass Trespass, using the song as the, as like the, the voice, the, the leverage to, to galvanise people to come along. And did they? It. Did they come? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So there was uh, thousands of people on, on the day the 90th anniversary naturally getting as close to the summit as possible and having a good old sing song <laughs> and just remind us of what happened at the kinder mass trespass on the on the original on yeah. the 24th of april 1932 uh, some 500 activists ramblers uh, from manchester salford and sheffield trespassed onto the land of kinder scout which is the highest point in derbyshire which also is part of the album too. And they, and they, they went were, there to assert their right to, to walk in the countryside. Absolutely. Uh, back, back in those times, it was the, well, the idea of getting some clean air from, from the mills. And they wanted on, on Sunday to go and access Kinder Scout on the moors of the Pennines. Uh, I mean, this was 1932. And it was private at that time. The land it, was fenced off, presumably. It was, yes. Uh, used for grouse shooting. Um, still is, but the access is a bit more open now, but it's, it's looked upon as the catalyst for the British National Parks as the um, Kinder Mass Trespass. So 20 years later, unthinkable at the time, but 20 years later, the creation of the first British National Park was the Peak District, uh, which Kinder Scout is, the, um, is part of. Right. Why, why are these stories important to you? For me, I like to... For my own music, I like to sing songs about radical history, Northern English history. And, and you're a Northerner by music. birth, are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I lived in Pontefract, originally from Pontefract. Right. And I um, live in Huddersfield now. Right. And, what, think, and, and, and did radical politics come into your life early as well? Well, I got into uh, folk music through, through punk, so through The Clash. Right. and things like that. Um, but what I really took to, story songs, songs uh, like Spanish Bombs by The Clash, which talks about the Spanish Civil War, songs by, by Christy, Christy Moore, there's a lot of fantastic story songs, Bob Dylan, and that's what really drew me to folk music. But especially with the Kinder Trespass, 
and uh, Winter Hill Trespass, which I'll sing a song later on that. That's what I like about folk music, it's the, it's the people, it's the stories. And if you take the folk out of folk music, the people out of folk music, I don't think you're left with too much. So it's the storytelling tradition, and that, and that crosses genres. That's the storyboard of life, is, is storytelling. But it's the, it's the working people's stories in folk music often, isn't it, that, Absolutely. that take centre stage, and that's what makes it different. Absolutely. That's what I gravitate towards. To yeah, it's, it's why I enjoy doing the music that I do. It's why I enjoy researching the songs, the stories, the, the hidden aspects of radical Northern English history and culture. And what about tramping the countryside? Has that been with you for many years? Well, where we are now in the, in the Three Peaks, this is definitely an area where you'd have your, your first gateway, your, your gateway hill, your gateway mountain as a Yorkshire person. And you're often taken up here from a young age with your parents, maybe against your own will. I'm hearing echoes of this. <laughs> I, I grew up in Sheffield and was yeah. taken up various bits of the Peak District, quite often against my will as a young lad. But yeah. it gets under the skin, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Um, and definitely around here will be many people's first foray into the hills from Yorkshire and from Northern Lancashire too. And is it a, a serious climb that we have ahead of us, or is it uh, quite a gentle incline? I suppose it depends on... It's subjective, isn't it? But, uh, <laughs> it will depends be... on what you're comparing it with, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's quite... I, I, I feel it's quite gentle. We're not going to be scrambling. It's, it's going to be reasonably gentle, I think. So. Mm. And we're surrounded by sheep down here at the bottom. I saw the shepherd rounding them up with his quad bike yeah. earlier on. And there's some really interesting bird song going on around us. And I just want to tell you, it's a magnificent day, you know, yeah. because there's, there's a lot of blue sky and sunshine. And uh, you can see the sort of shapes of the white fluffy clouds, the shadows of them on the side of the hill ahead of us. Now, I wonder if this is a place for you to sing about the Winter Hill Trespass, which was a lesser known, mm. but nonetheless significant trespass yeah tell us about that it was in september 1896 where 10,000 people from bolton and the surrounding area um tore down gates and fences to liberate a footpath which had been closed off by a local landowner called colonel ainsworth and on that day these 10,000 people they tore down gates fences had a bit of a, a ruckus with the police and when they reached the summit of uh, winter hill they'd managed to liberate that footpath from Colonel Ainsworth. But naturally, after getting to the top, climbing a hill and having a bit of a ado with the police, they were naturally quite thirsty. So they descended these 10,000 people to the, uh, the local hostelries around Winter Hill, which there was two or three at the time, 10,000 people cramming into these hostelries. And the local newspaper the next day reported, uh, as, as a direct quote, that the, th the thirst of the weary walkers could not be quenched. <laughs> and it just inspired me to write the song. On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday. There's room for thousands still On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill Ten thousand come last Sunday, there's room for thousands still On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill Ten thousand come last Sunday, there's room for thousands still Landman's locked the gate Says you'll have to wait Your leisure's less important Than a grass upon the plate I'll let the tops run free Shooting merrily I says the grouse has lived on that They're more long for you and me Sunday will you come For a walk round Winter Hill Ten thousand come last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand come last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. Can't you read the sign? 
All this land is mine. A right of way is a right of mine. I'll fight for what is right. Coppers come in force, crouched behind the goals. The heather was a blooming as we marched for the workers' cause. Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday. There's room for thousands still on Sunday. Will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday. There's room for thousands still. Come spinners, miners, weavers, come all of you workers. Tie your boots and yomp the mud and liberate the land. Common land privatised right before your eyes. Our birthright, it was poached by the devil's greedy claws. Sunday, will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday, will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday, will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand can last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday, will you come? For a walk round Winter Hill, ten thousand can last Sunday. There's room for thousands still on Sunday. Will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand came last Sunday. There's room for thousands still. That's brilliant. And you can hear not only people walking past as you were doing it, but also those two lapwings uh, crying, and they were just uh, circling overhead as you were you were singing. Yeah, they were absolutely yeah. beautiful. Have you got a compass in your in your violin it's, case? <laughs> it's a it's a humidifier to check the moisture in the air. Oh right. So it, I mean, what this, do you do if it, it goes wrong? What do you what do you do if it's well, on the wrong as level? I discovered in Italy when I was taking the fiddle, it dropped right down to very dry. And, uh, and not long after I'd seen it dropped, uh, the glue started to come undone on the fiddle. Wow. So it needs to be repaired, actually. I've got a bit of, a, a, bit of a, a crack appearing in the top of the fiddle. So that's what it's for. So you keep your eye on that and make sure your fiddle doesn't fall apart. <laughs> oh, right. do you, do you, I don't think there's any risk to it today, though, is there? Definitely not, no. <laughs> not unless it rain, we get a sudden burst of rain, but I don't think we will. It's no. Really beautiful and blue. <laughs> the view here is just lovely, isn't it? Yeah, Ingleborough, um, it's, it's a freestanding mountain. You don't really get them in England. A freestanding mountain is like Kilimanjaro. It just it has its own, nothing else around it. That's its own top. And uh, Ingleborough uh, had uh, a Roman race course on top. A race it's, course on top? A race course on top. Oh, horse because, racing? Yeah, yeah. Wow. A race course on top. And uh, That must have been spectacular. It must have been, yeah. It's very flat, very flat on top, very wide. And over to... The left is Penny Ghent. Penny Ghent is uh, taken from, well, Brythonic. It's Brythonic language, which is Welsh. A descendant um, of Welsh, I suppose. Ghent means it was a tri it was a tribe who lived around there. But also, Ghent is very uh, close to, well, what Welsh is now, the wind. So it's called Hill of the Wind or Hill of the Ghent people. And the Ghent people were a tribe who lived around there. And Pen means hill, so in Welsh. Oh, in Brythonic, should I say. So we're right between those three peaks here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We've just come alongside the railway track now, Johnny, so we've obviously climbed the height of the Ribble Head Viaduct because <laughs> we're at the same level as the railway track now. Yeah, yeah. And there's a signal box here. Yeah, so uh, we'll cross over or underneath it, uh, just after the Gleemore signal box. And the mountain's really away to our left, isn't it? That's right, yeah. There's still another, just over another 1,000 feet to go. Oh, yeah, thanks very much for reminding yeah. me of that. <laughs> and my sense of you, Johnny, is that you're a bit like Bob Dylan, in this respect at least which is that you're on a kind of never-ending tour. <laughs> is that right? You're always uh, on the way. It can be, yeah. I've, I've done a lot of touring in Europe, 
yeah, played over 20 countries so far. I think that is very much the, the duty of a folk musician is to bring their songs, their traditions, their stories to other people. Well, I was going to ask you, because you know, when you're singing these songs of northern working-class life, yeah. how does it go down when you're playing to an audience of Germans or, or Dutch people or whatever? I think, yeah, I think there's a slightly different relationship because you're not uh, actually from the area. But the, the, the stories of struggle, the stories of people, they cross borders, they cross generations. So it doesn't matter if you're from Slovakia, from the UK, from uh, South America or anything like that. These, the, the songs of struggle, the, song, the songs of protest, the songs of people, um, they, they cross everything. These are, these are story songs. We're just going over some uh, stepping stones across the stream. Now, the stream's quite low, actually, isn't it? Um, so we don't... We're not in danger of getting our feet wet. No. So when you're touring, I've, I've heard that you only take public transport. Is that right? I, I only use public transport, pretty much. I don't drive. I've, I've done a tour from Huddersfield, where I live, to Istanbul on buses and trains, which, wow. which took five weeks uh, to do. Five weeks to get there? Five weeks to get there, yeah. Buses, trains. And um, were you playing along the way? Did you stop and play yeah. on the street and that kind of thing? or did you? No, did you... there was uh, book, book shows along the way. Yeah, that was quite a few years ago. Now I'm a little bit older, I, I, I don't have the... <laughs> uh, the legs to kind of do those kind of especially doing uh, this this project so far it's uh, taken a little bit out of me i wonder if this is a a good place for another song johnny what have you got in your locker now um because this album is uh, recording songs on the respective high high points of uh, northern english counties and traditional songs of those i think it's natural to try a song called the lishung by a broom which is a uh, a cumbrian folk song which is Recorded on Scaffold Pike, which is the highest point of Cumbria, but also the highest point of England. Crikey, and, that must have been some challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, taking a guitar and a rucksack full of recording equipment to the highest point of England is a, a, a tough <laughs> thing to do. Uh, did you have anyone with you? I did, yeah. Thankfully, uh, my friend Dave, who's been helping me out with a few of these... Uh, these journeys, but uh, he didn't really do much of the carrying for that, for that one. Oh really? What, he left it all to you? He did, yeah. Miserable song. <laughs> <laughs> As I was walking in the north country Down by Kirby Stephen I happened for a bee As I was walking up and down the street A pretty little by a chance at four to meet She was right, I was tight Everybody has their way It wore a lish young by a broom That led me astray She kindly invited me to go a little way Yes was the answer to her I did say There was me with me music up and down the street And her with a tambourine Beat in hand and feet She was right, I was tight Everybody has their way It wore a lish young by a broom That led me astray Straight out for Kendall we steered her and I Over yon green mountain the weather being dry we Each had a bottle and we filled it to the top Whenever we was feeling dry we took a little drop She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way It was a lish young by a broom that led me astray Night was coming on and good lodgings we did find Eatables of all kind and plenty of good wine Good 
good bed and blankets just for we two. I rolled her in me arms, me boys, and wouldn't you do too? She was right, I was tight. Everybody has their way. It waddle ish young by a broom that led me astray. Early next morning we rose to go our way. I called for the landlord to see what was to pay. Fourteen and sixpence just for we two A fiver on the table, me darling, then she threw She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way It waddle ish young by a broom that led me astray The reason we parted, well I shall let you hear she started out for Germany right early the next year And me being unwilling for to cross the rage and see Here's a health to me by a broom wherever she may be She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way It waddle ish young by a broom that led me She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way it waddle ish young by a broom that led me astray. That's very specifically a song mentioning Kendall and yeah. the lakes and all of that. Yeah. Uh, do you know a lot of songs from that area? Well, well, this particular song, Jeff Woods uh, was a person who lived in Leeds and he promoted a lot of Cumbrian songs. And this song was written by someone called the Cumbrian Poacher who apparently killed a gamekeeper and was sent to Australia for his crimes. And uh, it mentions Kirby Stephen, which is in Cumbria, but it was in the the county of, I think, uh, Westmoreland at the time. And Cumbria is a, an amalgamation of three counties, parts of Lancashire, Westmoreland and Cumberland. So, yeah, this song is specifically known as a Cumbrian song, but there's been versions of it by Clannard, many others too so it's it's one of the Cumbrian songs that has kind of taken be, wings yeah taken wings especially yeah so let's move quickly to the top now shall we Johnny is it, is it far from here I'd say another mile and a half something like that and so, is this where the climbing really begins it is yeah I think because because this is a, a really popular route the three peaks is done by charity goers today we've already seen someone who's dressed as a cow yeah, we have, um, yeah. <laughs> but because it's a very popular route it's just well paved and I dare say it'll be the same right to the top so there's a lot of bird life here isn't there there's, there's so wonderful to see curlews and lapwings and then the skylarks and the little birds fl just flitting across the path in front of us uh, which I don't recognise, I must confess, but... I think, they know, meadow, I think they were meadow pipits. There you are, I see. I knew that you'd know better than I. <laughs> so we're going across a very narrow bridge over a, over a stream now. Single file only. It's often a discussion we've had on this podcast about the right to roam, and you, you sang about it earlier... And obviously it's controversial in some, some respects that uh, land, some landowners are opposed to the idea of a right to roam. Why do you think it's so important? Well, I think as we see from our Scottish brothers above the border, uh, they've had a right to roam since the early 2000s. Uh, this is something that isn't a, um, too much of a controversial issue in places like Sweden, Estonia, Norway... Finland where they, they've had a full right to roam for decades and it's only in England that we we have this 92% of the country that we're not able to access but this, this didn't used to be the case before the uh, enclosures but within the song uh, A Right to Roam The one you sang earlier The one I sang earlier 
is listing listing a handful of people who have been, I wouldn't say necessarily pivotal in the, the right to roam, but have promoted the countryside in their own way. The lyric is uh, Wainwright, Wordsworth and McCall, uh, Coleridge, Hillclair, many more. And Wayne, Alfred Wainwright, who is the author of the Pictorial Guides of the, the Lake District, it was his books that got me into accessing the Lake District. At the time, Wordsworth wasn't necessarily an advocate for the right to roam. He, he said that the Lake District is a national treasure, but as soon as the tourists started coming in, the Victorian tourists, he, he really wasn't happy about the idea of people coming in. Well, that's, but, that's the objection that people have, isn't it? You mm. know, that the accusation is that if people come, they'll trash it. Yeah, that is the, the accusation, of course. And um, But I know with the, if people are educated properly about accessing the countryside, and that there are more than fires and things like that, uh, but people do need to be educated of how to access the the countryside properly. So with um, rights come responsibilities. Absolutely. You know, sometimes the uh, question that people ask me is, well, hang on a minute, there's footpaths everywhere. I mean, we're not having a problem walking up the highest peak in Yorkshire today. Mm -hmm. There's a very good footpath. You know, we, there's plenty of places you can go to walk. Mm. Is that not true? Well, on, on public footpaths, there's no, there's no issue. But I know if I, if I just pulled out the map now here, Probably most most of this land here would be uh, on the map shaded in like a, a yellow colour, which means uh, this is open access land. But if you look on other maps, especially in the south of England, there just isn't anything like that. So luckily in the north, we we do have um, quite a lot of open access land. But th that isn't the case across the majority of England. Whereas in Scotland, there would be no question uh, where you could walk as long as it wasn't in someone's garden or uh, cultivated fields full of crops. So there are protections in law for farmers and for landowners? Yeah, absolutely. It's just about respecting the countryside. There's no, there's no reason why people can't go outside and leave no trace. Take only photographs and leave only footprints. And I suppose, Johnny, that, that music helps to raise awareness, doesn't it? Music you know, spreads the story yeah. to your audience and tries to educate them about the history of, of land access. Uh, absolutely, that's what folk, that's why I'm drawn to folk music. Why I'm drawn to, to punk music as well is the, uh, it's the call to arms, it's the, uh, it's the connection that it has to the people. But uh, using song as the, as the vehicle to spread that message there's few other things that are as pertinent and as uh, potent as using a song to spread a spread a message because it's yeah that's what I like about folk music. Coming to a branch now in the route. Here we are, Yorkshire Three Pigs public footpath, one side one and three quarter miles. You said it was one and a half back there, about half a mile back, mm. but never mind. You were just keeping morale up, I think, weren't I think you, Johnny? So, yeah. So one and three quarter miles if we turn left here. And what happens if we go straight on? Deep Dale, five and three quarter miles. And back behind us, Ribble Head, two and a quarter. So Johnny, we're just coming up the ridge now towards the summit and there is an absolutely spectacular view away to our left of the valley that yeah. we came from. You can see the signal box we walked past earlier. It looks like a little toy at yeah. the bottom there and some farm buildings. And then the other mountains are silhouetted against the sky. Yeah. It's um, worth the climb, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. But below us is uh, uh, the River Ribble, which is the uh, you know, one of the Yorkshire uh, rivers that flows west of Lancashire. Um, not many of them, but uh, yeah, in front of us is Ingleborough, as I mentioned before, Penny Ghent, and all the way around the Forest of Bowland in Lancashire, uh, Morecambe Bay, you can see the Lake District, you can just see Scaffold Pike, I uh, can point that one out. Um, just over there? Just behind, if Mikey moves his head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mikey. You can see uh, there's a depression. 
and that's between Scaffold and Scaffold Pike. Oh yes, I see it now. Right there, and uh, most of the northern lakes, the Howgills, and uh, the North Pennines. So uh, this this is very much, um, we're, we're seeing a lot of the north here. And this is 360 degree view, and we're at the trig point, yeah. and we've touched the trig point now to prove we've arrived, and I can hear a skylark. And that, in fact, is a skylark descending, not a lark ascending. Yeah. It's coming down to land. Oh, boy, this is worth it, isn't it? We've, we've, we've laboured off. Absolutely. It's a yeah. bit of a slope, but yeah. uh, just, hang on, we're in the way. The other people want to touch the trick point. <laughs> Let's move out of the way. These well, people have we're going to stop and have some lunch, it. and then you're going to come and serenade us then. And we might do. What's going on, guys? We might stop and have our own lunch. Come on, curiosity. So we're recording a podcast called Folk on Foot. Yes. where we uh, go walking with a top folk musician, Johnny Campbell here, in oh, this case, in the landscape that's inspired his music. Yeah. Right. And Johnny is recording his album at the top of the highest points, of uh, the highest mountains in the north. Fantastic. So yeah. we're up here to record a song with him yeah. for his oh, album. Wow. You're, more than welcome, you're more than welcome to uh, sit and listen. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. You can join yeah. in if you fancy. Oh, we will. And I'll, give you, like a, I'll give you a bookmark for the oh, podcast definitely. so you can Brilliant. tune in. Fantastic. The, the episode will be coming out later this year. Your tones will... <laughs> through the, uh, feel like the skylark. See, yeah. Go yeah, go on, go on, go on, get yourself yeah. yourself. Oh, well, I'll to do a song. I will listen to you, yeah. yeah okay. Oh dear, oh dear, this are curious ages. Alteration, all the rages. Young and old in the stream are moving. All in a general cry improving. From the exhibition, I've brought news down. They're gonna make you a seaport town Instead of factories and cheap tailors Nothing you'll see but ships and sailors This will be, I'll bet you, a crown Leeds becomes a seaport town Over the world there'll be boats and barges Men of war ships that never so large as Steamers forwards, backwards towing Ride for nothing, they'll pay you for going Sailors swearing, spars are battering Heaving, hoeing, handspikes clattering Strange sails crowding every day Sailing and anchoring in Leeds Bay This will be, I'll bet you, a crown Leeds becomes a seaport town The Liverpool gents all be undone Here there will be now but fun done Lads south wild running their rigs sirs Landing the butter and the bullocks and the pigs sirs Then to make us merry and frisky Mealy potatoes, barrels of whiskey New laid eggs, twelve months taken Old maids with money as rusty as bacon This will be, I'll bet you a crown Leeds becomes a seaport town Dear curious sages, alteration, all the rages, young and old, stream are moving, all in a general cry improving. From the exhibition I've brought news down, the gun to make you a seaport town. Instead of factories and cheap tailors, nothing you'll see but ships and sailors, this will be, I'll bet you a crown. Leeds becomes a seaport town This will be, I'll bet you a crown Leeds becomes a seaport town That's fantastic, Johnny. What's the story behind that song? The song Leeds a seaport town, well... In the Industrial Revolution times of the canals finally coming to Leeds and the imagination of what might happen and what might come along during those times as uh, variations of that song of uh, Manchester a seaport town, Birmingham a seaport town. Great to sing it up here though. Yeah, I mean there's no connection to Leeds uh, right here but for the 
the Yorkshire episode or the Yorkshire track of this this album, I wanted to get an industrial song in there to try and show off the county in that kind of sense. Well, you're showing it off at its best today to me. Thank you very much indeed. It's just glorious to have been up here, to hear your songs, to hear your stories Absolutely. and to admire this view. Johnny, thank you so much for joining us on Folk on Foot. Oh, thank you, Matthew, thank you. Thank you, Mikey. You're welcome. <laughs> We really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. And if you'd like us to go on making more of these podcasts, please support us by making a contribution through Patreon or by buying us a coffee. You can do both things at folkonfoot.com slash support us. And we really appreciate any donation, no matter how small. We love making Folk on Foot, and with your help, we'd like to go on making it forever. <laughs>